Hi, uh, this will be, that was a very strange start. Anyway, this will be a tutorial for Blender to show how to make glass-like objects. Essentially, what we're going to do is just go through a couple of the basics just so that you can actually have something that looks like glass in your scene and whatnot. So, from here we're going to start with, actually... We could start with a cube, but just to show something later on, we're going to add a UV sphere. And, oops. Ah, that'll be good. As I immediately break it. Alright, so here we are. Now, we're going to hit F12 just to see. As you can see, I kind of already was doing something. So, but okay, so that's the initial object. Now, what we want to do, well, first, we want the smooth shading because not smooth circles look ridiculous. There we are. Actually, you know what? I do kind of like that disco ball feel. So, flat it is. Um, sorry, just got a message. Alright, so with our object selected that we want, what we're going to do is go over to the right side and we're going to click this button that says material. Now, on this material, it's just blank, but hit new and all of this comes up. Now, what's important is for all of the options we have, there's a preview screen that will show what ultimately it looks like now you can do just was like a flat plane you can do it of a sphere of a box of a monkey head hairs and you can do it against a sky background so but right now since we are working with a sphere let's go ahead and do it in this somewhat checkerboard room all right now the main points i'm going to be touching on will be transparency, mirror, and shadow. But let's go ahead and close shadow for now. And let's close mirror for now, why not? Uh, shading you can get, be close to. So, transparency, as, as you see, the box is by default not checked, so we're going to left click it and check the box. And then this area right here that says Fresnel, sounds like a, uh, sounds like a town somewhere, but and the main thing I Fresno, that's besides the point. So if you left click and drag it to the right, as you can see in the preview, it starts becoming more and more transparent. You can pretty much have it to the point where it's you can see a little bit of the halo on the outer edge. But let's go ahead and take it to a nice 3.0 for now. So um also we have blend which pretty much it's a way of actually being able to take the objects and whereas if we throw the blend all the way to this side then it's only the very outline but the more that we have it like this the more it actually has a definite outer edge that you can actually see so that's transparency. What we'll do now is come down and we're going to add a little bit of mirror to it because just as with glass, even though you can see through it, there's still going to be that reflexive property. So here we actually have reflection, which is how much it will reflect the surroundings. So if we pump it all the way up, as you can see here, it's reflecting greatly what's the environment that it's around um but because it's glass you want some of the reflection but not too strong of one so but it all depends on the kind of material that you're going for but as of right now we're going to put it to point 408 fresnel also will show how much it also reflects light as well because this is glass, we'll go ahead and put a nice light tint to it. So go ahead and bump that up to five. Now, 
what we can do to further this is we can actually add hold on just a moment I'm sorry we can actually add color to the object so let's say if you want like a drinking glass but you don't want it to just be straight clear you want it to have at least some feeling or some tech not necessarily texture but color to it I should say uh, if you click just where this is white it brings up a color wheel and then from there you can go ahead and move around the colors you know find that color you want also put the gradient of it so let's say you want a darker scale of colors you know just we don't want an overpowerly blue but we want a darker tinted glass so do that that tints the very edges of the reflection around but what we can also do is hit it with a little bit of diffuse and do the same thing knock it down a little bit and with this diffuse you can actually see it immediately take effect here go ahead and add a little bit of a blue gray overcast feel something to it so alright that's good now a big thing is that what we see right now this preview is what it's going to look like when you render it right now it's not showing anything so that's not to fret so if you hit F12 see it makes nice texture you can do is you can up the um let's see we can go through and actually get out of this I want to up the mirror on it a little bit up the mirror a little bit up the whoops yeah if you just click it you can actually type in individual numbers yourself but um let's see transparency boom boom F12 there are. so as you can see you can this part is very see-through but it still has this part around that isn't but is also still glass like if you go back out look at the transparency let's say we want to tone the transparency down just a little bit let's say down to 2 or 2.1 that'll be fine you can see okay so it's a lot more full now it's not just necessarily just kind of a portal but as you see the shadow is way too strong for this object so for fortunately there's a way to fix it unfortunately it is somewhat counterintuitive because what you have to do actually is whatever the object that is receiving the shadow you need to select that and then scroll down here to where it says shadow and it can receive shadows but you click this so that it can receive shadows from transparent objects so if we click that now and that will apply to this cube once we hit F12 again as you see the shadow will be of this transparent object rather than the solid object that it once was so that's one way to go ahead and that's also if you have something in let's say you make a cup and you want to put something inside of the cup then you can always turn around to do that while in fact that reminds me let's try opening I know it has to be in one of these possibly documents I had a file that was previously Oops. that I had previously made something in and let's see, documents blender there we are open blender file this is a nice little wine glass of sorts I made as 
I reveal the hidden monkey within. But as you see, when I hit F12, this one's going to take a little bit longer to load because I had messed with this a lot. But this is before I found how to make the shadow casting appropriate. So as you see, we have this gl uh, nice glass. Don't worry about that little hiccup in here because that was just me messing something up. But the shadow hits this monkey's face entirely too strongly. So what we're going to do is we're going to select said monkey face. And we're going to come over here to material. Add new. We're going to scroll on down. Hit the shadow. Receive transparent shadows. Now, if what I told you was correct, and hopefully it was, because if not, I'm going to look very crispy. This should make it receive a softer shadow rather than absolutely just being oomph there. And sure enough, I can already see that little smile on the monkey's face. He's happy. He's happy to know that I finally fixed the problem. I'm not sure he's had eyebrows say something completely different. But as you can see, there you are. The shadow hits, so you can tell that the shadow hits the monkey's face and it's in the glass, but it's not a strong, oh my goodness, the shadow's going to take over the world kind of style. So, hopefully that was helpful, beneficial to you, especially the shadow part. That stumped me for a long time, so if anything you take away from this, I hope that that at least helps out a tiny bit in your endeavors. Also, feel free to just click around, mess around with whatever you might find in here because uh, if you ever screw anything up, there's always control Z to undo any problems that you might have caused. Well, other than that, that concludes this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it.